A core part of the OpenTelemetry framework is the OpenTelemetry Collector. It acts as the intermediary for collecting, processing, and forwarding your telemetry data to an observability backend. Let's go ahead and take a look at the core parts of this collector, where you'd want to use it, and how to as well. So let's start out by understanding the role of the collector itself. It has three key steps, receivers, processors, and exporters. So starting off with those receivers then, these serve as the way you actually send your data to the collector. So for a node app, for example, if you set this up with OpenTelemetry and you have the OpenTelemetry SDK, you would set up your exporters to use the OpenTelemetry protocol to go ahead and send your telemetry data to the collector. You can actually have several sources of telemetry data sending to a single collector, and the collector actually supports a wide range of open source and commercial protocols for receiving that data as well. It's not just the OpenTelemetry protocol itself. Once the data is being collected though, we can go ahead and utilize the processors. This step does exactly as it suggests, and it processes the collected data, allowing you to perform tasks like batching, filtering, and transforming. One of the coolest examples of this is being able to take in telemetry data and make sure you filter out any sensitive data like API keys. Once we've gone ahead and processed it, then we need to export this data to the observability tool of our choice, like Jaeger, Zipkin, or even Betterstat. This allows you to go ahead and store the data, visualize it, or even perform an analysis on that data. With these three key steps, then you can set up different pipelines for your telemetry data, whether by type or by source, allowing you to perform different transformations and have different places to export your data to as well. It's immensely customizable to suit your observability needs. So what are the benefits of this then? And if you've previously set up your telemetry by sending it directly to an observability backend like Jaeger or Zipkin, you may be wondering why you'd want to use the collector as the middleman. Well, that leads on to the first key benefit, and that is that the collector can go ahead and help you prevent vendor lock-in. If you use a vendor-specific agent, it will make it really difficult if you wanted to change this out later, and you may have to change your actual code as well. With the collector, you can decouple this relationship, meaning if you wanted to change your vendor, you'd only have to go ahead and change the OpenTelemetry collector configuration. You wouldn't have to change anything in your code base. The next benefit is consolidation. It's been fairly common to have one vendor or one tool for the specific parts of your telemetry, like logs, traces, or metrics, each with their own way of exporting the data. The collector goes ahead and unifies this all and can be the single collection point for all of your telemetry needs, especially due to the support the collector has for various open source and even commercial protocols. It's gonna go ahead and really simplify that process of actually exporting and collecting your data. Another benefit that I touched on earlier is that the processing allows you to filter out sensitive data like your API keys or other information that may have been included in your telemetry data. Sending this to a third party tool could be a security or privacy issue that you don't want to deal with, so the collector lets you filter out your telemetry data or even sanitize it as well. This processing support also allows the collector to be really reliable and efficient. You can use that processing stage to go ahead and batch telemetry, and the collector can even handle retries as well to ensure reliability in your telemetry data. This also has the great benefit of helping you manage costs through those processing tools like batching, filtering, sampling, and aggregation. This allows you to ensure that if you do use an observability backend that charges for your telemetry data, that you're only sending the telemetry data to it that matters and that will help you out the most. Lastly, a really cool point of the collector is that it's observable itself. It's a fantastic example of an observable application, and this allows you to have complete confidence in the tool, knowing that it's working as needed and being able to see any issues arising before they become a problem and identifying if you have any performance issues. Although given how performant the collector is, that should be really difficult to do. We'll actually be taking a look at how we can enable and see this internal telemetry in a bit. It's super easy to set up. So then with the collector explained, let's take a look at how we can actually go ahead and get started with this ourselves. So to get started with the collector then, we actually need an application that's sending telemetry data out. So what I have here is a very basic node application, built this in another video, so I'll leave that linked in the description down below. But essentially it's been instrumented with the OpenTelemetry SDK. This means it has traces, metrics, and logs, and these are currently being exported using the OpenTelemetry protocol. However, we need to actually go ahead and receive these somewhere. Now by default, the exporters that we have set up are actually sent to a default URL, and that default URL is going to look a little something like this. So it's gonna be on localhost. The port will be 4318, as that's the default one. 
and then it'll be something like v1 and then traces for traces metrics for metrics and logs for logs essentially since we're going to be installing open telemetry collector in the same place as this code we don't actually need to go ahead and provide this as it will use it by default but it's worth pointing out there in case you're installing the collector somewhere else you may need to go ahead and configure a url another thing worth noting as well is obviously this is a known application if you're using any other language you should be able to find out how you can go ahead and instrument open telemetry for that and also set up the open telemetry protocol exporters so with that then let's take a look at how we install and configure the open telemetry collector there are numerous ways you can go ahead and install the open telemetry collector i'll leave a link to that documentation in the description down below what we can see here is you've got options like docker kubernetes nomad linux mac os and windows and what i'm going to be using in this tutorial though is docker as it's generally the easiest to set up for docker literally all you need is simply one command we're going to go ahead and use this command down here as we want our own configuration file so make note of this for later because the first thing we need to do is actually go ahead and set up our configuration file to tell open telemetry what it needs to do when it runs up to do that we're going to go to the configuration section of the documentation and you'll see a page called configuration structure down here you can see all of the things you need to know about the open telemetry collector but we're going to get started with a really basic one and i'm just going to copy this one here you can see we've got some receivers processors exporters various other things i'll go ahead and explain them but let's go ahead and add this to our code base in vs code then i need to go ahead and create that configuration file so i'll create a new file and then i'll just call this one config.yaml and then paste in the configuration that we just copied over. So the first part here is our receivers. This is where we tell the collector where our telemetry data is coming from. This here is the default setup to be able to process data via the open telemetry protocol here. And you can see it's either using gRPC or HTTP. Now this is what I have configured in my node application since I configured it using the open telemetry protocol exporters. And by default, as I said, these use the URL of localhost and then 4318 and then slash v1 and then whatever is being sent over. So traces, metrics, or logs. So this configuration here allows us to go ahead and receive that data on that port there of 4318, which is the default open telemetry protocol port. So all I need to do is go ahead and open that up using Docker. Now, next up, we have our processors. These take in the data that we've just collected via our receivers, and it allows us to go ahead and modify or transform it before we send it off to the exporters. Now you can set up loads of different options here. And one thing to note is it doesn't have to be a processor for all of your telemetry data. When we go ahead and look at this service section down here, you'll see that you can essentially pick what processors you want to apply to whatever data you've received in as well. So you can really mix and match and set up all of your pipelines in this single configuration file. Now there are loads of options for processors. So I recommend checking out the documentation for more to find the one that suits your needs. But in general, this batch one here is highly recommended for everyone. Essentially with this default configuration, it's only going to send telemetry data when either 200 milliseconds has passed since the first piece came in or when 8,192 items have been received. Now, next up, we have the exporters here. This is essentially saying once we've done our receiving, once we've done the processing on the data that we've received, where do we go ahead and send this data off to? So this is where you'd configure your observability backend like Jaeger, Zipkin, or Betterstack. And you can see this is actually sending off the data using the open telemetry protocol as well, as a lot of tools actually have support for that as well. Now I'm gonna come back here and change this to use Betterstack in a bit. So we'll leave this section for now. Another one to point out is the extensions here. Now extensions provide essential monitoring and debugging capabilities. So the health check one up here just provides some simple health monitoring capabilities and status reporting. This one here provides some performance profiling of the collector's runtime. And then Z Pages is actually quite powerful and it allows you to see some diagnostic web pages which show real time data about the collector's operation. Now I'm not actually gonna be using these as we'll see in a bit how we can use the internal open telemetry collector telemetry to go ahead and monitor that ourselves using betterstack.com. Now, next up, we have the service section. Now, this is the most important. Firstly, I'm just going to remove the extensions that we just got rid of. Now, the reason this is the most important is essentially this is where you configure everything that we just set up above here. If you put something in the configuration up here, but you don't put it in a pipeline, it's just going to be silently ignored. So we set up our pipelines down here and you see there's actually been three in the configuration that we copied over. One for traces, one for metrics and one for locks. So that's generally a fairly good way to do it. And you can obviously split your pipelines based on a load of different options. What you can see here is each one is set up with a receiver. So where is the data for our traces coming in from? Well, it's coming in from the open telemetry protocol. And you see again, that's the same for metrics and logs, but this could be a different location. 
and then what processors do we want to run on that data? And again, this is where I said earlier that you don't have to run one processor on all of your telemetry data. You can pick what process you want to run on what type of data you receive. And then finally, where do we want to send that data? So again, you could have multiple exporters based on if you're using different tools for your traces, metrics, or logs, or for different systems or any other filter that you might set up on that data as well. So this is pretty much the basic configuration of the open telemetry collector. So let's go ahead now and actually run that Docker command so we can see it up and running. So if I open up the terminal here, all we need to do is paste in that command for the Docker run there. And as you can see, we're passing in my custom configuration file. The only other thing as well that we need to do is go ahead and open up the ports for the receivers up here for these protocols. So to do that, we can just come in here and say dash P and then 4317, 4317. And then we'll do the same for 4318 as well. So that's dash P, 4318, and then 4318. Go ahead and hit enter on that and that should spin up. What you may notice though, is once we spun this up, is you may be getting some of these errors saying it can't connect. That's because at the moment, this exporter is actually going to nowhere and it knows it isn't able to go ahead and find something on the other end of this exporter. So now we can go ahead and actually configure this to use our own tools. And I'll also go ahead and configure some more receivers here as well. So we can see some cool data coming through to our observability backend. So the tool I'm going to export my data to is going to be better stack here. As you can see, it comes with some really cool features for log management, as well as infrastructure monitoring and some nice dashboards as well for open telemetry. Go ahead and get started with a free account. I'm going to click sign in here. And once I'm signed in, I need to go to telemetry and sources. I'm going to go ahead and connect a source. I'm going to call this one Otel. And then down in platform, I'm going to select open telemetry and then click connect source down here. I need to go ahead and make note of this source token here. So I'll just leave this open like so. Now we can go ahead and go back to our configuration and set it up to export our data to BetterStack. So with that source set up, another place to go is into our documentation where we have a guide on open telemetry logging. You can see you can actually go ahead and run this command to install the collector if you don't already have that set up. But since we're using Docker, I already have the open telemetry collector running. So we can go ahead and click this. Now for the source token, you can actually go ahead and give the name of the one that we just created. So that was Otel for me, and it will go ahead and populate this for me. What we can see is this is the configuration that we need. It comes with the exporters that we want. It comes with the processors and then also the service and pipelines to go ahead and send my metrics and my logs off to BetterStack. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this configuration here. Back in VS Code then, I can go ahead and delete the code that I have for processors, exporters, and service here. And I'll go ahead and paste in the one that I just copied from BetterStack. Now, if you're not using BetterStack, it's gonna look pretty similar. You'll just have to set up the exporters for your service. What you can see here is I've kept the receivers the same. So we're receiving our data via the OpenTelemetry protocol. But then for exporters, we have two new ones. One of them is just a Prometheus remote write for BetterStack. And then another one's the OpenTelemetry protocol endpoint for BetterStack as well. In processors, a new one's been added. All this does is it adds an attribute to all of our telemetry data, and that's just the better stack source token, essentially so that better stack knows what source this telemetry data belongs to. And then finally, we have our pipelines. All these have done is these have been configured to use our receivers. There's actually an extra one here of host metrics. I'll go ahead and set that up in a bit. But then the processors uses the batch one and then our new one of the attributes. And then finally, the exporters uses our new exporters as well. So our metrics are going to be sent off using the Prometheus remote write exporter. And then our logs are sent off using the open telemetry protocol exporter as well. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and configure the receivers here for some host metrics. Now, essentially what these host metrics do is allow you to collect data on the system that this is actually running on itself. So the host itself. All you need to do to actually configure these is just type host metrics and then you can configure various different ones and that will be scraper config like so or scrapers and then under scrapers you can have things like the cpu you can have things like disk memory and various other things again check out the open telemetry documentation to learn more about that the other thing i want to do though is actually go ahead and collect the open telemetry collectors internal telemetry to do that it actually exposes it via a prometheus endpoint within the container itself so i'm going to go ahead and paste in this configuration here but essentially this is saying i want to receive my data via prometheus here and then it provides a scrape config so every 10 seconds it's going to go ahead and look for more data on the target of 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and then 8888 and as i said by default 
this is where the open telemetry collector actually exports its Prometheus telemetry to. So this is going to go ahead and pick that up. So we're receiving the data from the internal open telemetry information. So we can go ahead now and add this down into our pipelines. So in our pipeline for receivers for metrics, since this is going to be metrics, I'm going to go ahead and add in our new Prometheus source here. So it's actually being picked up. So with all of this configuration done, then I should be able to go ahead and run the collector and see some of our data coming through to better stacks. So if I go ahead and run what we had before, we should see that it's added that scrape job for us of Prometheus. And as I said, everything is running and beginning to run and process the data. So let's head over to better stack and see if it's worked. Back on better stack then on my source here, if we scroll down to the data collection, we see we have a tick for logs have been received as it knows some have been received and also some metrics as well. So we can go ahead and see our logs coming through with the hotel here. So we can see that it's listening for requests as that was because I started up my application here. And you see we can expand this and see some of that data based on the open telemetry data that I set up in that application. We can also go to dashboards now and we'll have an open telemetry dashboard. So by default, this dashboard here is configured to get that information that we got from Prometheus for the internal telemetry data of the open telemetry collector. As you can see here, it's got some metrics per second for how often it's sending points out. It's got the retry queue, it's got the status of it, the memory allocated and CPU usage. Obviously, I haven't had it up for too long, so these charts at the moment aren't showing much. But if I go ahead, you can also create some custom charts based on your own metrics as well. So for my application here, I actually had a custom metric for the number of dice rolls that I had. So I can go ahead and change this to a value. And then I could obviously set this to something like, let's say the last one or the count or something like that. So if I go ahead and use last here, I can go ahead and hit save on this. And I'll go ahead and add the chart to the dashboard. So if I go back to my dashboard now, you can see we've got a custom chart here and my custom metric point is also here as well. So I can go ahead now and then send a load of requests to the endpoint for my application. And we should see after a while with that batch request, it's gonna go ahead and then send that telemetry data over. So if I go ahead and actually up here, just change the time range, let's say I change it to the last two minutes, you can see the charts become a little bit more useful than they were showing before. But if we scroll down here, you can see on my telemetry data here that I have that data point. And then we've got the new data point coming in there of 44 as well after a while. So we've gone from 28 dice rolls to 44 there. And you can see how we're charting my custom metrics now. And all of this is going through the open telemetry collector. So there we go. That is a quick overview of the open telemetry collector and how you can go ahead and use it to collect your data and send it off to an observability backend. If you want to learn more about open telemetry, go ahead and watch this video here or check out the one that YouTube thinks you'll like. As always, if you have any more questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching.